Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. The Kori talked over what they've been through well apart. After some conflict, they rallied, just as Ira returns to the group. a knock at the door ira is standing there holding like two cartons of morley's i figured it was polite to just knock instead of coming in uh yeah also apparently miles doesn't believe in security and doesn't have a peephole so she opens the door why, and why the hell does he not something about computers i don't need one. computers it's a okay Hearing all this, Britta goes into the kitchen to try to wash the blood off her face. Wynn kind of steps out of the way and motions for him to come in. Ira walks in and just comes into the lounge. And as he does, he tosses a carton of Morley's towards Johnny. Johnny catches the uh, the carton, smiles a big grin, uh, and takes the uh, cigar that he was uh, nursing and puts it out in an ashtray nearby. Courtesy of Clan Tremere. We're almost becoming friends, Ira. You better be careful. He does not smile, opens the other carton, pulls a single pack out, and then tosses the second pa- uh, second carton to Johnny and says, and this one's from me. Johnny catches the uh, second carton, kind of looks at the first one and goes, all right, fine. You can have the Tremere ones back then. And hands the uh, first carton back to him. Ira puts a hand up and just shrugs and goes, keep it for the house then. I was telling Miles that he need to just keep the house stocked. I'll go over and put him in a drawer. He reaches a hand slowly inside his coat and then pulls out a small book for Wynn. Or like a small book and then hands it sort of towards Wynn. Stopped at a used bookstore while I was out. Sheriff, you and I didn't always completely see eye to eye, but I thought this might be a mending of bridges a bit. Wynn kind of reaches out and takes the book a little what what do now? This this is does not compute, but she just but I thank you. The book is a uh history of Thales of Miletus. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, the first Greek philosopher who pontificated about uh, science and electricity (laughs) and electrochemistry. Just truly some academic nerd shit Mm -hmm. of like, I know you like philosophy, so I got you an electricity philosophy Mm -hmm. book. No one will ever say you don't have a sense of humor. (laughs) And she kind of like perches on the back of the couch and ira goes and sits down in like one of the chairs there's like a lot of chairs and couches around this area right for, like, yeah in the general the living seating. room den ish yeah. area Britta comes back in pressing a little hand towel to her face to dry it off and finds a chair to curl up into sorry if i'm interrupting the conversation i'm sure everyone has a lot to talk about the girl where is she right now? Sleeping. Okay. Good. She's probably tired. I assume. And full of pizza. Funny enough, we were actually just starting to talk about Clan Tremere. Why'd oh, you yeah? say courtesy of? What? The cigarettes? 
It's like a shy nod. Well, technically, all of my money comes from Clan Tremere. So, if I bought them, Clan Tremere bought them. Does that mean you stole the other pack? <laughs> I was hoping there would be sort of a philosophical demarcation, the gesture. I picked up on it. Thank you. Johnny tears open one of the car- one of the packs, pulls out a cigarette, and lights it up. As soon as Johnny lights up a cigarette and says, it's okay to smoke in this space, Ira opens the one pack that he pulled out of the carton and also lights a cigarette. Well, regardless of who it's from, still smokes like a Morley. Good. Wind starts flipping through the book, just kind of so getting a little intoxicated by the smell of an old book. What were we talking about? Clan Tremere, actually. Yes, that sort of the prompt of in what manner and capacity. If I can answer questions, I will. I think we were talking about how much we can trust Reese, and for that matter, how much we can trust you. You seem to be on the level for the most part, but the timing of you entering the city's got everyone a little spooked, I think. Understandable. You want to answer any of that? As far as the timing is concerned, I can't say much in my own defense. How does one defend against coincidence? I will say that I was glad that I was here. I... And he pauses and he looks thoughtful for a little bit. I understand that I may have earned some trust, but not a great deal. I have perhaps a way to assuage you that the things that I say are true, but paradoxically it is a ritual that I would perform. So you would have to inherently trust that I had performed the ritual and it did what it said. Unless, Sheriff, you're a learned individual. Mm. Have you ever heard of the Bone of Lies? Yep. I have two. I usually use them for interrogations. Britta gives a bit of a wide-eyed look at that admission. Kind of like peeks over at Miles. I mean, it's a legit way to verify he's telling the truth admittedly i only have a couple and if i could be so bold i have a few questions as to the trustworthiness of some of you in this room as well i understand i'm the outsider here but and his eyes specifically look at britta who is wiping the look of concern off her face very slowly after miles seems casual And then he also actually looks at Miles before kind of settling back into a neutral gaze. I'd be happy to engage in a bit of quid pro quo. You have me at a disadvantage, though, so if that's not how you want this to go, it's not how it would go. I leave that in your hands. Your grace, this is your domain and your haven. Remind me, the bone doesn't compel you to tell the truth? If you lie, the bone will compel the truth. But what if you say I'm not answering that? Then I suppose that's not a lie. For a proper interrogation, usually the powers of auspex and sometimes dominate are used in conjunction. In full honesty, I (laughs) won't do either of those. I am trying to act in a spirit of trust here. We can also just have a conversation, but Again, I'm trying to show that I am somewhat trustworthy. I'm interested to hear what exactly you mean by quid pro quo with these bones. I would hold it. You could ask me a question. I would be compelled to tell the truth, or at least that I could not tell you. Then I'd pass the bone to one of you to whom I have a question. Hmm. I'll even, if you want, tell you the first question that I would ask. Again, I'm trying to be on the level so to speak. Wynn kind of gives Miles a look and shrugs. It's up to you. I'm okay with it if you guys think it's okay. I think the fact that we can say I'm not talking about that. There's no compulsion to hold the bone. Just drop it. Yeah, just give me one of your bones and ask me one of your questions. Do you want to go first? I was going to offer to... Okay. Calm yourself, Wynn. I reg- it's just this book is so goddamn funny. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Ira looks confused, like, I didn't pick a funny book. And then it's like, oh, okay, yeah. 
<laughs> Talking uh, about boning the prince. And yeah. he sort of pats his jacket pockets down and then pulls out what looks like a human jawbone and passes it over to Miles. Did you have to use human bits for this? Kind of. Oh. How morbid. It does not have to be a jawbone, but ritualistically, it, it I'll, I'm going off on a tangent. Yeah. Gotcha. Your Grace, my question for you is, can you think of a reason that you would share as to why your katana is tainted with demonic magics? Wynne is desperately minding her own business <laughs> reading that book. I didn't know it had an aura. Ira, aware of sort of the generous nature of how he worded that, nods at like, okay. Miles gave me more of an answer there than he needed to, and nods. Well, it does. Anyone with any form of thaumaturgical sight would be able to tell just by looking at your sword that it has been touched by the demonic, so... You may want to get rid of it. Britta gives Ira a dubious look, and then Miles the same dubious look. She does not think this is uh, likely. <laughs> this is not uh, just a mall katana that I picked up casually. I'm aware. I am familiar with the atomic structure of the blade. It's good steel. And it is also a beacon that you have been in contact with the unholy, which would be frowned upon should any archon or simply anyone who wishes to hold things over you. There are factions of the Camarilla who would use it as an excuse to snuff your life if they saw it. I'm aware of such factions. I just wanted to bring it to your attention so you can understand that a newly minted prince in possession of a demonically tainted blade could rouse some mistrust. Can you get that enchantment off? After a long pause of consideration, Ira just goes, there may be a way where you could keep it. Were you willing to let go of the enchantment? Could you put a better one on it? Not with any form of permanency. Ah, like, how long are we talking? Hours. I was hoping for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Ira gets this... L the there's, bone does not darken. There's, <laughs> there's no way for literally anyone in the Coterie to know this, but Ira just immediately flashes back to every Tremere who studies alchemy bullying him for having, like, trash transmutation. <laughs> it's just like, oh. If you can help fix this problem, it would be appreciated. Can do, your grace. I put a the bone down on a table. Uh, Ira reaches for it and picks it up. Jenny kind of smirks. Well, you don't want to hear questions from me first? Ira puts it back down on the table. If you wish, I thought we were going back and forth, but... Jenny picks up the, uh, the little jawbone, kind of looks at it like it's a trinket. Shoot. Honestly, Seneschal, I didn't have a lot of questions for you. That's uh, what I thought. He <laughs> puts it back on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> uh, oh um. Yeah, Johnny, you and I aren't uh, aren't known for holding our tongues so well. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna go get my katana while you guys formulate your thoughts. Actually. I'm going to walk away, basically. <laughs> oh, you actually thought of something. I did. He picks the jawbone back up. Just for my own edification, are you bound to Lord Reese? Reese did wake me up with his blood. Without using the path of blood. He had the means to do to, do, to get me up clean, and he decided to give me a little blood. At the time, Prince Rollins thought that this was just peachy. Well, I were nuts. Well, Mr. Reese was the Seneschal at the time. And I do recall that he used his uh, powers on the Ventru. Puts the, the jawbone back down on the table. I will reach for it again. So, do you have questions for me? Yep. 
please, Sheriff. When we were facing down the dragon, you looked scared. But there was, was a scared. moment in the fight where you looked like you were five years old and you had just broken your mother's prized china dish. What's that about? Ira, who was the one who offered this little game <laughs> and was like, I got, yeah, let's play this. Uh, did not think that anyone caught that and is not happy about it. Uh, and that clearly flashes across his face. Lord Reese attempted to kill Eden in the chaos and I intervened. How? There was a ritual. Chill of the wind saber. Once it is enacted, by breaking a pane of glass while looking at the target. And this takes some time to prepare. It is an elder level ritual. You said it would cut his head off. It would decapitate the person it was targeted at. <sighs> it's time. <laughs> Have a plus one die bonus to your frenzy check. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. <laughs> yep. It is a single success. With one success, you keep your beast in check. You can feel your anger, mm -hmm. and you can feel this hungry animal kind of pacing inside of you side to side, waiting for the chance to kill. Ira, who has zero points in empathy, continues on, not quite noticing. That Brita staring daggers. Brita's, like, <laughs> murder staring at him. <laughs> Johnny, who is kind of smiling at the whole pageantry of this silly little jawbone event, has suddenly gotten very quiet and is staring at Britta, waiting to see if she's going to snap, and he has to intervene before she kills someone. How did you stop it? How did you know it was going to happen? Through thaumaturgical sight, I am trained to look at, call it the weave of magic. As an elder level where too old, there is no way to stop it. He was gonna have me kill her. But it didn't happen. The amulet is not an elder level ritual. It was through the amulet that he was focusing on Eden. Most individuals, even most accomplished Tremere, would not have been able to do anything. Why? Because once magic is enacted, it is based on the will of the user. If the will of the user is successful, there is no stopping it. Unless you have the means. Do you have the means? I do. What are you actually doing here? In New Haven? Could you please rephrase the question? What was I doing here, or what am I doing here? First one, then the other. What were you doing here in New Haven? Investigating Lord Reese. When, while you're flipping through the book, you stumble upon a loose piece of paper, a receipt with something scrawled on the back of it. When curiosity kind of peeked at a tr random treasure in a books in a used bookstore book, lays off Ira for a second and peeks at it. The note says in Ira's handwriting, "Stop me! Don't let me take her." In the lull, when she's not questioning, Ira puts the bone down on the table and looks at Britta. Maybe still not clocking that she's, like, caged violence. Uh, she's certainly staring at you. Either way, he kind of stares back in a didn't set the rules of this little engagement, but I have questions for the girl in the tack outfit who killed the Tremere. I think about this time I come back with the katana. Britta does slowly get up and pick up the bone. Why is it seemingly way worse than when I left it? I spoke. What did you say? Hurtful things, apparently. Apparently. Pointed questions. I have a book you should read, Ira. I'll be right back. Apparently, Reese tried to kill Eden when we were fighting the dragon. He cannot just stop, can he? No, he can't. Oh, God. Apparently, Ira has some little Tremere tricks up his sleeve that prevented him from doing so. Well, I'm not clear exactly how that happened. Sounds like that'd piss him off right and good. 
Only a select few are given the training to learn those tricks. The Tremere don't generally appreciate those not totally loyal to the clan who can counter what the clan can do. In my experience, Clan Tremere doesn't appreciate a whole lot. Loyalty. Dedication. Focus. Study. Well, might as well. I'm sorry, Miss Ashcroft. Um, as much as I'm very curious to ask you a few questions, as a point of emphasis for what I'm about to say, could I... And he puts the hand out for the bone. Britta does not hesitate in handing it back. Ira holds the bone and kind of fingers the teeth inside the jaw, just sort of absentmindedly. The Tremere appreciate loyalty. Much like the Ventru, who have a rigid hierarchy, who appreciate loyalty to the clan, the Tremere are much the same. The Tremere and the Ventru have long, long been allies. And Clan Tremere has built its political strength as a relatively new, a relatively young clan in the grand scheme on its thaumaturgical might. And there are tricks, one could say, almost an entire discipline to itself to counter the ways of thaumaturgy, to stop magic, unweave it in its tracks. But Clan Tremere obviously, keeps an extremely tight hold. If you're known to possess this ability, and are not one of what are known as the Asters, who are... And Ira looks, gives like a nostalgic smile, almost. The boogeymen of Clan Tremere sometimes. The entirety of the clan will hunt you down. You will have made an enemy of all of Clan Tremere, and they will close ranks from all their petty squabbles. The same sort of thing happens when there are rogue thaumaturges about. Those who know the secrets of Clan Tremere, those who know how to perform thaumaturgy, particularly some of their more dangerous paths. And if you break from the clan, or if you are found to have been trading these secrets, if you do not show the loyalty to the Tremere that they appreciate. They will stop at nothing to hunt you down. And they will send men like me to find you and to stop you. And there is very little that anyone can do about it. And at that moment, Wynne pops up from behind the couch with a broken off wooden chair leg in her hand and attempts to stake Ira. Win, you've seized the edge and leaving over the couch. You're making your move. You have surprise. You will take an action. And then everyone is going to be rolling initiative. You do have an additional two die bonus for uh, doing it from behind. Okay. Win has pumped her stats to try and give the edge in this because melee is not where she is strongest. But Absolutely. She's... You have the ability to have taken time to prepare. As directed, Eden is hiding. Does my swift spec count? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Five successes. Four will carry over into damage dice. Stake steal plus one die damage. Now, before you move your dice, staking is diff nine. So uh, then that is four successes. Okay. Three will carry over into damage dice. Stake steal strength plus one die of damage. So you do have an additional die from that as well. Ira roll soak. Against staking, Ira currently has a 20 die soak pool. Um, I will be spending for potence for an additional level of damage. I got uh, rolled a bunch of ones on the second half, so I got five successes. So did I. The impact of the stake is absorbed. He has to take Eden incapacitate. When, as you drive the stake towards it, not only does it feel like Ira's shirt is buffed like he did for you guys in the Chantry, it's almost like his heart itself is made of stone. And now we roll initiative. Spending two blood for celerity, Britta is at a 12. Miles. Spending two blood for celerity, I will be at 19. Did you roll for your katana? Because I very yes. specifically mentioned it so you would go get it. Oh yeah, no, I definitely quick draw that. So I essentially just shoot the sheath off and... <laughs> 
It's ready to go. <laughs> Win. 13. Johnny. One blood for celerity. 15. Ira. Spending my readiness. 26. Ira, we act first on you. Ira will stand up from the couch as the sheriff attacks him from behind and out loud says, I knew I couldn't trust any of you. But on his face is very clearly a sort of look of relief and like, okay, thank God she understood me. But it, his words, it's like he's play acting at no one. Um, Just in case he's being watched sort of thing. Maybe. And then Lex, he will, I will spend for dual thought. And then he looks at what to his estimate are the two most dangerous or like unknown factors in the room. He saw the Seneschal whoop shit yesterday and specifically beat his ass even by accident. And also looks at Britta, who he didn't see do a lot of shit, but was with a crowd of people killing a bunch of Tamir. And so she's an unknown factor. So throws a hand out at Johnny and will use transmutation to harden the air around himself or around him and then reaches a hand into his coat, pulls out a Rowan wood stake and rips a cord off of it and throws it at Britta. Like, Is this your normal in dual thought? Yes. For the rest of the scene, Johnny, the air hardens around you like a force field. Uh, you cannot move past it, even with potence. Uh, you are trapped in place, and because I got seven successes on it, it lasts for the rest of the scene. He throws the hand out and crystallizes the air around Johnny, sort of trapping him in place, and then throws the stake. Not like he's throwing it like a knife, but like underhand tosses it towards Britta, and as he pulls the cord off, it sort of like splinters a little bit to turn into a little animate stake that launches itself at her chest. Declaring dodge now? Yep. It's a lot of eights, but it ain't a nine, so there are no successes on the attack roll as the little stake, like, splinters open and launches itself at your chest. Britta's dodge action is successful. But still spent, correct? Still spent. Yes. However, as it misses, it does not seem to be done. It will still be coming at you. Miles. I will toss the sheath off of it and in a smooth motion, go for an upward strike on him. Not quite understanding the situation, but... Watching win attack, Miles is in. I have no actions to dodge. I do not have celerity. <laughs> Lex, as his sword comes at me, can I reflexively counter thom to get that dark thom off? Yes, you may. I don't want him running around with that. People are gonna, He's going to get in trouble. <laughs> You're rolling versus one success. Then uh, easily get it. Yep. Okay. Ira, as the sword comes in, uh, throws a hand up. Not defensively, but pulls the magic off of it. Six successes. Five will carry over into damage. My soak pool against not getting staked is not as good. <laughs> uh, six successes, though. And your dice are on fire tonight, huh? Yeah. Big hands counts for this, right? Big hands counts for this. <laughs> Nine. I will take three, and uh, my shirt is cut in twain. Hot. I'm sorry. Uh, as Miles attacks him, Ira looks at him and just goes... I'm sorry about this, your grace, but the girl can't stay here. Either she comes with me, or more will come for her. He's still kind of confused, really. Um, like, Ira looks extremely sad saying yeah, all this stuff, I, but like... I understand that I, I need to be doing this, but also, it is weird the amount of magic that he's throwing out to be also be taken down, so... <laughs> very confused by all of this. Do so you he, say anything? Um, he... Just kind of looks resolute at this point and just seeing if anybody else has more information to throw it at this point. He's just he's moving in to back up his team at this point and try to figure it out. Understood. Johnny. Johnny will let loose a roar from inside the prism that promises the threat of ridiculous violence upon your <laughs> dumbass Tremere ass. <laughs> um, if I can use that to bolster my team with uh, perhaps some... Uh, Ironheart. You may spend a point of willpower and uh, start tossing out Ironheart buffs. Hell yeah. I don't think Miles needs it as much as the other two. But you're also down on willpower, aren't you? I am at half my normal willpower. <laughs> yeah. Look it. I'm going to spend three willpower. My last three willpower. I'm going to give each guys, each one of you guys a uh, Ironheart bonus to resist mind-affecting Thom. I don't know I don't if you have it, but... There's I'm no a reason Tremere, I got Dominate. 
<laughs> Johnny, do you say anything? No. Johnny just lets out just kind of, the kind of like angry Johnny roar that the hairs on ev- the back of everyone's neck stand on end. The coterie knows that this is a promise of violence and it is inspiring to hear that kind of battle cry. <laughs> For Ira, it is perhaps chilling in a way that he has not experienced yet. All right, next is Win on 13. So Win hearing Johnny's battle cry and knowing that he would be on this guy like like flies on shit. Win decides to take the spirit of what Johnny is and she just leaps at Ira and attempts to grapple him. Dex plus brawl. Let me know if you have any successes. Short answer, yes. He is grappled. Wynn vaults off the back of the couch onto Ira and just wraps her arms and legs around him as tight as she can and attempts to take his legs out from under him. But at minimum, she is attempting to hold on to him and keep him from being able to move. Hot. Mm. Hot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was going for. <laughs> uh, Miles, you're on celerity one, initiative 19. I'm going to move to the side and, like, stab him through horizontally and just be like, I really don't want to be doing this in my house. I just got here. My apologies, your grace. This isn't what I wanted to be spending my evening doing either. Yeah, I think we're all of one mind on that. When? What the fuck? He has to try and take Eden, incapacitate him. I will not fail Clan Tremere and Lord Rhys. And he puts particular emphasis on the word Lord. I stab him harder. Nine successes. Two attack? Yeah. Eight will carry over. Yeah. Six. I only got one. So I have one health level remaining. I move to the side and just a straight sideways stab right through the middle, trying to kind of keep out a direct eye line because I'm aware that that might be a problem. And I really don't know what your generation is so i just know that you have similar powers to my own and i've seen you shrug off the presence and chug Mm -hmm. an actual keg of blood well yeah i figured that had some indicators (laughs) there were enough signs to know that ira at least has some blood fuckery yeah and just be like i sorry it came to this Ira grunts, by the way, uh, does not, very clearly does not have the I do not feel pain power up. (laughs) Like, did not have a chance to cast that. So grunts and looks extremely pained. And just through gritted teeth just says, I explained what happens to rogue thaumaturges with my particular skill set. And the Tremere will come for her. No, she is here. If she stays here, I have to take her. Well, good thing we got to you first. I shouldn't have trusted you. But when, I mean, well, you can't see his eyes, so... Britta uh, Brit and Johnny can see his eyes, probably. Right? I don't know how much empathy either one of you has or chooses to have in this moment, but uh, his words say one thing and his eyes say something completely different. Honestly, I'm looking at this steak. I'm not looking at you. Neither one of you may notice. Johnny looks mad as hell. Johnny's low on blood and low on willpower and is very angry. And the other two are actively avoiding my eyes, so... <laughs> so his nuance of emotion and empathy is limited. Hey, you got a, you got a wooden steak chasing me around. That's, that's where my mm-hmm. eyes are. <laughs> Speaking of, I think we're on celerity, Johnny. Yes, we are, Johnny. So Johnny understands that the write-up for this spell says indestructible and other dumb words, but he's going to use strength athletics to break the shit out of this prism. <laughs> what are you using? Uh, strength athletics to break the hell out of this prism. And I'm going to spend blood to have uh, potents add uh, successes. Seven successes to break the shit out of this prison. You press through this little liquid oxygen and feel the prism kind of like almost crack, but it doesn't move. It doesn't give. Britta. The instinct arises to grab something to put the stake in, but then Britta, the second thought is to grab the stake. Give me dex plus brawl. You're at difficulty nine. Does graceful apply? Yes. 
That is three successes. You grasp the stake in your hand and you feel its splinters grasp at your like thumb and resist to the best of its ability, but you currently have it held. It's also warded versus kindred. I have gloves on. I do not know if that affects gloves the scenario. Gloves will not stop it. I need it. It'll deal three levels of damage. I need you to roll soak. Two successes. You take one level of lethal damage. I need you to make a self-control check. Mm-hmm. It sizzles in your hand. There is a cry of pain, and then her self-control is tested. Are you spending a willpower? No. Okay. I have. I don't know how long this is going. <laughs> one success. Okay. You maintain control of your beast. So there's a cry of pain, and then... Britta reels herself back in, and she still seems confused, but her attention is fixated in that quickened state that celerity brings you towards the tussle on the ground. Miles, do you still have actions? You got one more? I have one more. What are you doing? (sighs) Your grace, all I have to do is bring the girl and make my report to the council to see the downfall of Lord Reese. And my own promotion. Three to hit. Two will carry over into damage. Seven damage. Five soaked, which is enough to fill in that last one and put Ira into torpor. He looks like he's going to say something else. Partly play acting, partly pleading, and then the sword does what it does. In torpor, his skin tightens, and he goes very stiff, crumbling to the ground as this, like, dehydrated corpse. When when he goes to torpor, when carefully puts her feet down to make sure he doesn't go crashing to the ground, and kind of gently lowers him to the ground. When he hits torpor, does the effect on Johnny stop, and does the stake stop? No. Would you like us to continue that in a round? Yes. Okay. You, are, you are still in combat. You have only taken one celerity action, so it's still your go. Okay. So with her last celerity action and holding this painful warded stake, I would like to break it. If I can feel that there's a life within it. It is animated. Yeah. I cannot confirm or deny whether or not it has yeah. a life. But. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if it seems to be <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be a morality role or not. <laughs> <laughs> as an animated unit rather than those splinters is, coming off as splinters. Yeah. Nope, it is very much cool. an animated unit. Then I will try to break uh, it. Imagine like something that moves about as quick as like a house cat, like yeah. chasing you around, attempting to like essentially yeah. kill you. I'm just going to... Break it over your knee. Sure, over the knee. Sounds perfectly fine. Give me strengthless brawl. I will spend a willpower. Okay. Four successes, including the willpower. Through carry over into damage. Now roll strength plus uh, three. Two. Uh, it starts to develop cracks. Britta cries out for help, saying, the, s- the stake is still trying to get me, and it hurts when I touch it, and I don't know what to do. And she's kind of just thwacking it against her knee. Next round. <laughs> Britta, take three lethal. Mm. Roll soak. That's a one and a ten. Does that cancel out to zero or to one? Cancels out to zero. Okay. So three lethals taken on top of one lethal. Miles. I will attempt to cut the stake she said that is a danger. Roll it. Diff nine. Five successes. Four will carry over into damage. (laughs) Eight damage. With The stake goes still and then half of it collapses to the ground. Is the other half still fighting? No. Britta immediately drops the half when it goes still and inanimate and she pulls her hand back close to herself clearly hurting johnny continues to try to break free from the prison um he will spend uh blood for uh potence that's nine successes to break free with nine successes you can feel fragments of this unbreakable barrier getting loose into the liquid oxygen that you're trapped in but it holds unfortunately the coterie sees something very bad happen within the the prison johnny's eyes start to lose focus and you can see him being gripped by hunger frenzy because i am at zero blood and i am at zero willpower so stuck within this prism is a very big bruja problem You are out of rounds 
for now. Wynne <laughs> recognizes <laughs> she is still very much in fight or flight. She looks to Miles and Britta. Take Eden and go. Okay. And Wynne hefts Ira up on her shoulder and goes out the door. You rush out the door. What are you doing with Ira? I'm going to put him, like, I'm assuming there's a garage or something. For Miles' cars? I got to assume you got a big ass garage, my man. <laughs> Can't put him in there. Is there, like, a mechanic's <laughs> shed? Like, there's a pool house. All right, I'll put him in the pool. <laughs> yeah, that was that was mentioned. That was mentioned. I put Ira in the pool house. Put him in my garage. That's where the important okay. things go. Uh, I put him. Put, I lounge him comfortably on like a pool house couch and just kind of look at him and say, "Message received." She has one blood left and two willpower, so she should not be around Eden right now. And so she just kind of leaves him. I'm sorry. How much blood do you have? One. I'm gonna need a self control check. Okay. Ooh. Uh, remember that your self control is capped at how much blood you have. Alrighty. <laughs> Whichever is lower between the two is what hey you, man, you got any willpower true? in there? Yeah. yeah. What? If your if your if your blood pool ends up lower than your self control, you roll your, your blood pool. <laughs> Fuck. So I'm gonna spend a willpower. Highly recommended. One success. With one success, you manage to keep from doing something you may regret. Well, to Ira. Since it seems important to narrate, I have four blood and one willpower as I am running towards where I think the guest rooms are, since I think that is where Eden may be. Give me a perception plus alertness. The difficulty of this challenge is six. Okay, that is reduced by, well, technically four, but it goes down to three due to the minimum. Yep. So then there are three successes. With three successes, you find Eden hidden, kind of like having slipped into Miles' room. And she is there, under the bed, kind of peeking out from behind the comforter that kind of like is draped over the king's size or king size bed. Does the path out of Miles' room lead through the area that Johnny is in? Uh, yes. Does Miles have a private bathroom? Yes, he does. So, Britta, generally in her experience of frenzying vampires, has seen line of sight to be relatively important. And silently, she, like, running full speed, kneels down, outstretches a hand to Eden, hoping she'll take it and come out. I'm going to need a uh, manipulation leadership role. Mm -hmm. I did not speak, so I don't think hey applies. And that is two successes. With two successes, you convince her. And though she hesitates for a moment, she does take your hand. Britta offers what she can of a comforting smile in that small moment of outstretching the hand towards her to pull her out and trying to lead her in as quick and as stealthy an exit to the bathroom as she can to find the two of them a new hiding spot. You'll definitely notice that she looks like she has been crying. Her movements are very rigid. And every time she hears... Johnny bellowing mm -hmm. from his cage. She seems very shaken up by the wrathful Bruja. By the time she makes it to the bathroom with you, yeah, you guys can you can roll Dex plus stealth. I, I figure I'll lock the door behind us and I'll narrate how well that hiding attempt happens after the roll. Sure, go for it. Four successes. Okay, you do a very good job hiding. So... Britta makes sure, as I said, to lock that door behind the two of them, and she takes Eden over to... Miles, what kind of shower do you have and or bathtub? Is there a curtain? It should be the question I'm asking. Curtains? Okay. So, in that case, what I'm going to do... So, the shower is separate <laughs> from the bath in the sack that it is like its own walked-off area, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like this combination of tile and naturalistic stone and, like, extraordinarily fancy, like, ray 360 so, range. There's, no, there's yes. no, like, cover, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, there's a wall. I'm spending this last I can change power. the lighting, I don't, of course. <laughs> I'm not spacing out when I'm trying to save a kid's life. There's a gigantic tub slash <laughs> hot tub. <laughs> deal in there of oh, course those, like big 90s like whirlpool tubs huge, huge. Yeah. difficulty six nine with <laughs> <laughs> with the willpower two successes so spotting that this space is incredibly beautiful unfortunately for Britta in this moment she abandons what her previous thought was and instead drags 
Eden drags us too harsh. She's trying to guide Eden as quickly as possible to both of them are very small. They're going to fit inside the cabinets. Understood. If Eden seems okay with it, she's trying to pull Eden in for a hug. Eden seems very cooperative. So she'll pull her in for a hug when they're kind of like in the cabinets. Uh, That's probably necessary regardless just for this cramped space, but she's trying to like instill some comfort in. Oh, and if I can in this position, I'd like to cover Eden's ears. Uh, Yeah, you can absolutely. We will cut to Wynn returning from the pool house house where she has stashed Ira. She made sure his body was comfortable, but she also made pains to make sure he's not going to get accidentally zotted by sunlight. Thank you. Yep. (laughs) Happy to help. I'm just standing there confused. (laughs) (laughs) Like, what the hell? She puts herself in front of Johnny, where he is slavering in the cage, and she looks at him, ignoring everything else in the room. Johnny... I am here for you. I'm hungry too. As soon as this gr- glass is gone, we're going to go eat. But I need you to come back until then, okay? And she puts her hand up against the glass and she will attempt to quell him. Now, before you roll, mm-hmm. regardless of what the outcome is, the prism is going away. So if you succeed, the prism is going away with Johnny feeling a little better and able to communicate like a person. If you do not succeed in the roll, you're the nearest meal. Go ahead and roll. No pressure. Well, that's not great. Oh, no. <laughs> what you looking at, pal? An eight and two ones. I oh, no. have a request. <laughs> We're uh, back in rounds. Hold maintaining on. same initiative. Wait a second. <laughs> yep. I have a request, and you can feel free to say no. But I have been, not I, Ira, but I, Neil, have been weak of nightmares guilt showing up to talk to the coterie and do shit and i know i'm having a weird night right now elsewhere but is it possible to adjust this outcome a little bit with a guilty empathy kneel i don't give know. me a willpower roll difficulty nine Oof. that one pulls away then it cancels out the nine leaving one ten so one success Mark this against your total number of uh, opportunities there. Two left. And when his rage is too great, and he's been through just too much this past night, and at the worst time possible, there is a shimmer, and the container that holds Johnny at bay fades. And as Johnny is right about to lunge for you, the phone rings. And this startling, ringing sound echoes and catches the two of you in just the most awkward time, and you both find yourselves quickly looking towards the phone. Johnny, his hands have outstretched with impossible speed and gripped Wynn by the shoulders, and he looks down at her as his teeth start to pull back. His eyes focus. Do you want to get that? Why don't you take a walk? I'll walk over and get the phone. Miles here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hey, 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 Miles, is, um, this is your number, right? This is your new, uh, is, is Wynn there? I, I promised, I, I promised Nguyen that I was going to call, and it's been a couple of days, and I've... I, yeah, I, yeah hold, on, hold on one sec. You're on speaker. Hey, uh, Wynn? Is it? Are you... Wynn's... For a minute, it looks like it doesn't matter to her that Johnny is about to rip her throat out. She's too relieved to hear that her emotional support milk is okay. Guys? And gu- she, her face just kind of relaxes and changes. Yeah, Neil, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I know, I I know. I promised that I was gonna call, but it's been kind of a crazy couple of days. And hey, um, so I'm we're we're a little tense right now, buddy. Um, do you think you could say some stuff that um maybe could could soothe the room a little bit? That you're okay that and that I, we're all still together, maybe? Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> you want me to say that I'm okay? Uh, I want. You're talking, so you're okay enough. Sure. Yeah, no, this definitely was not like a last call scenario. I'm totally fine. Everything's fine. I I will come to the phone 
in a second, okay? okay? And sure. you can you can tell I, me what needs to be said. No, please no. tell me we hear like the screams of <laughs> frenzying rap notes in the background say, at that point. In the background you hear and they're just things chasing the car. Alright, <laughs> unless Wynn understands how predators work and so she doesn't like dart away from Johnny. She like gradually slides away while his attention is elsewhere, but she doesn't want to draw his attention. So she kind of slides closer to the phone. Johnny lets her go and starts edging towards the front door. Hey, uh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just calling because I, I wanted to let you know because I, I, I did promise. I, I promised I was going to call and I, you know, it's been a little nuts, but I just, I needed you to know that I, I didn't forget. I mean, okay, that's not true. I forgot for a couple of days, but I, I'm trying to come home. Okay, that's all I wanted to call and say is I'm, I'm trying real hard to come home, everybody. I promise. Well, I. We'll be glad to have you, man. Um, things have been a little weird here too. Oh, um, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there. It's hey, okay. Are, if if you're you, coming back, that's enough. Is Britta okay? To, have you seen her? Okay is a is a word, but it's. It, but you've seen her. She's, she's here. Her. She, she's walking. She can talk. She's she's. Oh she, thank God. We're okay. Neil. Right now, we're all functionally okay. Okay, that's great to hear. I um. Johnny will open the front door and head out into the night. Miles. Yeah. Johnny is going to frenzy and eat the first human he sees. He literally gets no roll. I'm going to go, uh, hold on a minute, Neil. Uh, stop. I can get food without you going out. Uh, Johnny, you are cognizant enough to hear that. Now. <laughs> Wynn comes over to the phone and turns the speakerphone off. Okay, buddy. It's just you and me now. What do you need to say? Nothing. I, I just, I, I, it's, you know, it's been a hell of a... Everything. And I just, I needed everybody to know, um, before I lose signal here or something bad happens, uh, you know, I, um, I'm sorry. Okay. And, and, and I, I, I love you guys. And I, I'm, I just needed to let you know that I actually am trying. Okay. I'm trying to get home. Neil, I never doubted you were going to try and come home, you dipshit. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. I, I, I just, I'm trying my best, okay? okay? Um, and, and if, uh. Well, we're trying our best to be here, okay? And think there's a lot to talk about, but. Yeah, I'm, there is. Okay. We're not gonna talk about it over the phone, but we're, we're okay. I, I assume I speak I, for everyone on, when I say we love you, but I at least uh, speak for me when I say I love you, okay? Okay. Uh, last thing, I, cause I, I don't think that there's someone in New Haven. <laughs> if I don't make it back, okay? There's someone in New Haven who knows about. Is Miles the Prince right now? Y yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's someone. Do you, I don't want to give context or anything. Just, just tell Miles. There's someone in New Haven who knows about and him. And it cuts out. Neil? There's... Neil. And she like starts like pushing the, hey, connect back. And then after a minute she of just trying, she kind of like reluctantly puts the phone down. You hit star 69, but it doesn't get you to him. I start moving off. Come on. I think I should be able to let you feed without killing the person. Um, but yeah, I have combat ghouls across the street. Most of my ghouls live nearby, but not on the property. So I'll, I will take you there and I'll let you be outside and then I will bring them out to you and we will we do our damnedest not to kill this kid. Barely contained restraint, J Johnny kind of glassy-eyed follows you. It's like dealing with somebody who's kind of like at the edge of some kind, like not drunk, but... Barely hanging on. Yeah. When, with one blood in her, does she have enough blood in her system that she's not going to immediately feed in frenzy on the first person she sees? How much blood do you have? One. No, being in the presence of someone is a friendly and see stimulus for you. But you do get a roll. You okay. Just, you're just rolling one die. All right, so I'm going to leave the house, if I can. Okay, where are you going? Out the front door. Are you going with Miles and Johnny, or are you going somewhere else? She'll go out the back door if we're butted up against the woods, and um, when we'll go out into the woods. So she will try not to kill the animals that she feeds on. Whether she remembers whether that was successful or not is unclear. You call dear to you, and you feel the beast rise. I need a self-control roll. You have uh, just a single die. One success. With one success and feral whispers, you are able to speak to these deer. Do you have uh, inoffensive animals? Yes, I do. Okay. So they're not even so frightened of you. So just tell me how you want to handle it. Wynn basically says, I do not want to betray your trust, but I need help and I will be good 
to the herds of deer and your offspring for however long I am capable of doing so. But if you can help me now, I will see that trust returned. They are drawn to your magnetism and don't seem to resist when you go to feed from them. And the only thing that is strange is the dozens of ravens gathered overhead in the branches watching you. When Wynn has taken enough, she looks up. She thanks the deer. She licks the wounds so that, which is probably gross, they're covered in ticks. But she closes the wounds with a lick and she looks to the ravens and just kind of cocks a head at them as they don't usually watch when raven's not around. The ravens watch you with human intelligence. Well, that's very weird. She, would it be animal can or empathy to a kin? Like, attempt to discern the intent of these. Normally it would be animal ken. But again, they watch you with human intelligence. Give me empathy. Which, which trait in empathy? Uh, perception. One success. With one success, you are confident that these are not natural ravens. They are ravens, ravens. But, like, these are not the ones that you normally would interact with. And when they have finished watching you feed in a loud rush of flapping wings, they take off and fly away. When, with feral whispers, calls out to one of them to see if any of them will come back. It doesn't understand. Without feral whispers, she will call out for one of them to come back. They do not obey. Wynn makes a note of this. And Wynn's head becomes a little clearer and she kind of closes her eyes for a minute just kind of processing and she sends Britta a text. There is no reply if you send to Britta's cell phone. If possible. Or unless there is a reply I don't know about because I cannot be in <laughs> between everything that's happened. I don't have my cell phone. <laughs> Tell me what you sent. I've fed. Are you safe? Yes. Where are you? I'll be back soon. Okay. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Muirhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Segelfest. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. Well, there you heard it, folks. He stabs him harder. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Pierce me, Miles. Hot. Pierce me, Daddy. With your big hands. Pierce me, Your Grace. <laughs> <laughs> this love triangle has gone horribly awry. For who? Johnny, obviously. Oh, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Did you hear him? Yeah, it was hot.